Why never work? Our planet is rich enough with resources that everyone on it could be kept nourished, sheltered, and healthy, with only a small amount of labour from each person, labour of not nearly enough suffering and sacrifice to count as what we currently define as work. Our society is not built that way yet. Therefore, if you want something, work. I swear this woman is the gift that keeps on giving, and as long as she keeps on being this gift, I'm going to continue mocking her for it. Now the subject of today's video is going to be the gender pay gap, because as always, it keeps coming up and it's amusing, especially when it's the independent. So, women mostly work well below their levels of competence and it won't change until more men work part time. That's right men, you need to start working less for equality. That must really, really challenge those that have families to feed, or even more so those that are male feminist. The only way they can truly help equality is by taking home less money, not progressing up the career ladder to enable women to take his hours if they want to, which they won't, and go up the career ladder, which they won't, because they don't want to. The recent obligation on companies with more than 250 employees to report on their gender pay gaps has vigorously refreshed the debate on equality at work. No, it didn't. For God's sake, you were trying to fob it off as if it was actually a gender pay gap. Oh look, Ryanair has a huge disparity where over 80% of men earn more than the women, but the majority of those men were pilots. Skewing the data ever so slightly, unless you're about to tell me a pilot should take home minimum wage like a air stewardess. I don't think it's a fair argument to make. And that was the problem with a lot of these, where these arguments have come up, as if they are valid. It is not valid to simply take all the employees, put them on a chart, split them by gender, and then be like, ah yeah, mm. the only way to resolve this is either they work less, which for a pilot by the way would be stupid. You can you imagine if they clocked off mid-flight? Come on. The point is ridiculous. It stands, I think. Anyone can click on the .gov study, and within seconds, access a range of data showing what the gaps are in their own organization and how these compare with others. The comparisons might be with others working in the same sector, or with the workforce more generally. I want to quickly go to the gender pay gap study, but not to look at the company. I want to read a few bits here that are quite relevant to an argument and point I intend to make. What is the gender pay gap? The gender pay gap is an equality measure that shows the difference in average earnings between men and women. Sorry, between women and men. It sounds better when it's men and women. It's petty, I know, but come on. The UK gender pay gap is at its lowest level ever, just over 18%. At some point, you're going to get to the real gritty bit, where it gets to the point where you finally realise you have actually, in fact, attained equality in pay. The only difference is different career paths, if that makes sense. You cannot have someone whose job it is to invest be paid the same as a secretary. And I say this knowing many are going to say, oh, you're being sexist, but... Women, for the most part, choose simpler jobs. Why is that? Many of you might not ask. Well, I'll tell those many that did not ask. Because men like to be challenged. They don't like simple lives. They like things that make things more exciting. The gender pay gap does not show differences in pay for comparable jobs. I'm not sure what to say here, really, now am I? Unequal pay for men and women has been illegal for 45 years. And yet, massive companies are being sued by women who believe their job stacking shelves on the shop floor is comparable to that of someone who is having to lift crates in a warehouse, and those in the warehouse doing more physical, more physically demanding work is comparable. I would argue it's not, on the grounds that somebody's at more risk of getting a hernia from that than they are from lifting up a tin of baked beans. What are the causes of the gender pay gap? It must be sexism, patriarchy, misogyny, all the other buzzwords that are so 2015. The causes of the gender pay gap are complex and overlapping. A higher proportion of women choose occupations that offer less financial reward, for example, administration and sales. Many high paying sectors are disproportionately made up of male workers, for example, information and communications technology. It's important to note and acknowledge now, just because they are made up of more men and administration is made up of more women, does not mean that these jobs are not open to the opposite sex. I have to be clear here, and while it would be great to get more women into ICT, and more men obviously into administration, 
there's only so much you can do before it looks like you're manipulating people, and eventually it will just come down to personal choice. A higher proportion of women work part-time, and part-time workers earn less than their full-time counterparts on average. Imagine my shock. Is that an accusation of lesser hourly rate, which is true for the most part? Or are you making a very obvious statement and thinking it sounds a bit more profound than it is? Also, we have to take into account here the reasons why women work part-time. People don't like it when this gets mentioned, but those that have families find it very difficult to work full-time because of the hours around school run. It is, after all, a consequence of having a family. And I say this on an assumption that the woman herself doesn't have the father, perhaps. Or even if he is, he works full-time because that's pretty much a dynamic that has existed for a long time and will continue to exist, no matter how hard people try and change it. Women are still less likely to progress up the career ladder into higher paying senior roles. And now we have to ask again, why is that? Now I have a sister, now she works in, or had worked, in care, but was reluctant for years to progress up the career ladder. And when I asked her why, and I know this is anecdotal and can be dismissed, but it does make a very easy point for me. When I asked her why she wouldn't do it, she did eventually. She went up to team leader and senior or whatever. She told me it was because she didn't want that stress. The stress of responsibility, to which I pointed out that the extra 50 pence an hour made a big difference in her life. So perhaps she should shelve her inability to handle stress or learn to handle stress better so she could do better for herself but this doesn't work on all people, and wanting to progress, be responsible, and take on more doesn't suit people. Some just want to go to work, go home, and relax, and then count their pennies. Others want to work, succeed, improve, get better, get so good they make so much money, because some people are driven by other factors that aren't wanting a quieter life. And those that want those challenging lives, for the most part, are men. Maybe it's the testosterone that makes it so that they want to constantly in the fray. It's a mystery. What is government doing about the gender pay gap? I can tell you what the government's doing. It's perpetuating it incorrectly, inaccurately. The government is taking action by requiring large employers, including the public sector, to publish their gender pay gap and gender bonus gap. That is bullshit. Bonuses should not be the same for everyone. I think it's important to recognize here bonuses are usually negotiated. And the gender pay gap is always bullshit, because it's derived from the median. Considering the disparity already, this is just... Offering 30 hours of free childcare for working families with three and four year olds, that, that's equality for you, and encouraging girls to consider a wide range of careers, including those in high paying sectors traditionally dominated by men. Considering it, and actually taking it up, are two different things entirely. The government has already extended the right to request flexible working for all employees. It does not mean though that the employer will. They can request. It can be denied. Introduced shared parental leave and commissioned a review to look at how we can remove the barriers preventing women getting to the top of their careers. When that review comes out, I bet it'll have two words. Two words that will make it quite clear why women don't progress at all. Personal choice. You're welcome. Anyway, let's go back to the article before we finish this. This openness must be good for business as well as society, but information alone doesn't guarantee progress. Actually, it shows change, so it is progress. But because of the nature of this, I don't care. Just because women can point to precise figures on how far they lag behind doesn't mean that the gap will close quickly. Define quickly. Nothing can happen because that would be ridiculous. And based on the standards you're setting, and based on the information you're pushing, which is all taken inaccurately anyway, how do you progress when it's already been done, but people are now pointing to inaccurate information as if there is still a fight to be had? Combating discrimination and enabling women to gain promotions are crucial. Discrimination is wide and varied, and women have the right to attain a promotion if they have earned it. How's that? But in my view, ah, the opinion bit, yes. We need to swing the camera round and instead ask how far men will change their patterns of work. Well, it depends. If they have a family and the wife wants to work as well, I'm sure they can shift and make things work. If it's a single male, 
I find it very unlikely they're going to give up work for someone else. Because if a single male is working, it's probably his focus. Because he doesn't have responsibilities, doesn't have charges, so it's going to be a case of he wants money so he can spend it on strippers and video games and a nice new suit, because suits are cool. Rather than looking only at removing barriers to women, we should think how we can change our images of career progression for all. All this does, and all this article does in fact, for those that are interested, is tell me that much like feminism that doesn't really strive for equality, you are trying to drag men down to the level of women rather than focus on elevating women. Because you've taken what you consider to be something that would elevate women, but actually it doesn't. It keeps women there because I don't believe just because jobs are more profitable, challenging, stressful, are available because you've made men go down to where women are, that those women are then going to choose to take those jobs. They're not. We know this is the case. Men thrive in stressy environments. Women do not. Sexism 101, everyone. Anyway, I hope everyone has a lovely Monday, and thank you all for listening. Oh, and seriously, the gender pay gap in 2018? Christ. I've got downs. In your ass. Imagine my shock. <laughs>